Welcome to Salad with a Side of Fries. I'm your host, Jen Trepic, talking wellness and weight loss for real life. We're here to clear up the myths, misinformation, bad science, and marketing to teach you how to eat and how to cheat. Are you ready? I'm having salad with a side of fries. So we are talking about spicy foods. So I've heard so many times over the years, it boosts your metabolism. You eat less. Like there are tons of claims about spicy foods. So I wanted to talk about it. And I don't know. I like spicy. I can handle quite a bit of spice. How do you feel about spicy food? I love it. I mean, I'm the person that puts the jalapeno in things. <laughs> jalapeno, I always ask for at least medium spicy in an Indian restaurant. Like, I love it. I think it adds flavor most of the time, especially if it's flavorful spicy. Yeah, I agree. I love spice. And before even digging into this research, you know, when people told me about all these claims around spicy food, in particular, the idea that it makes you eat less, I was like, I think. Maybe that happens just because we're more aware when we eat something with that much flavor or when our mouth is sort of growing to a five alarm fire. Like, I think we notice more of how much we're eating, (laughs) right? Like that awareness piece could certainly make us eat less than when we're sort of mindless around it. That's also my opinion, not necessarily science. (laughs) Well, I have noticed I made pico de gallo from scratch for a friend's party and I put a little bit of jalapeno in it. And I noticed that because it was so spicy, I ate more slowly every time. And I took a little bit less because I wanted to make sure I didn't end up with a mouthful of fire of there you go. <laughs> too many jalapenos. But it tasted so good, though. I could taste the onion. I could taste the jalapeno. It was really I didn't use as many chips as I normally would have either. So I eat more slowly. Yeah, but the chips thing is interesting because sometimes, like, if your mouth is on fire, the way you get rid of that is dairy or carbs. So, like, eating more chips or bread or sometimes, like, I was in a restaurant once and somebody ate, like, a stuffed jalapeno that was so spicy. They gave them a cup of milk to drink to help readjust their mouth. But so I went digging into the research on all this stuff because— you know, I geek out on it. So (laughs) a lot of the research on spicy foods in general looks at spices like cumin and cinnamon, turmeric, peppers, and chilies. And there's only a little bit of research on some, and then there's a lot of research on others. So generally, there's some evidence that they can slightly raise your energy expenditure, which like your resting metabolic rate, and potentially because it raises your core body temperature and then decreases appetite. But it was interesting if you already eat spicy foods regularly or you're doing it a lot over the long term, it may not have the same results. It's like there's like desensitization almost that happens. One study found that turmeric suppressed fat tissue growth in mice who were given, you know, it was curcumin is the ingredient. Also for curcumin, which again, it's the compound in turmeric. So it may reduce inflammation in the body. It's a powerful antioxidant and antimicrobial. So it could be used in terms of like bacteria in the body. I actually have curcumin on my list for us to do a nutrition nugget just on curcumin. So we'll come back to that. The most extensively studied piece of the spicy foods is on what's called capsaicin. And that is the active component in chili peppers. And there's quite a range of benefits. Interesting. So there was this UCLA study that showed it may slow the growth of and destroy cancer cells. So this UCLA study looked specifically at capsaicin and prostate cancer cells in mice, where it inhibited the growth of the prostate cancer cells and left healthy cells unharmed. Wow. I never heard about that before. A link with you know, something spicy and cancer prevention. That's amazing. I know. And that's specifically capsaicin. Like, I would also say we need more research, but it's interesting. And it doesn't seem like, I'll come back to this, but like capsaicin in reasonable amounts doesn't really seem to have side effects either. So couldn't hurt. On the weight loss piece, there's evidence that, like I said, it's connected to raising the core body temperature. 
So increasing your metabolism, the burning of calories. I heard a nutritionist, I don't know if she was a nutritionist or a dietitian, but I heard somebody claim that research showed a 5% increase in metabolism. From what I've seen, that seems like a lot. I mean, there was a study showing that people ate about 75 fewer calories after eating red chili peppers. I'm not one for counting calories in general, and we also know calories aren't the whole story. So I take this research with a grain of salt. I mean, I have noticed personally that it does take the edge off of hunger when I have spicy things I don't seem to do something to my hunger. And also, if you're menopausal, sometimes it can cause a little bit of a hot flash to raise that body temperature. So you may not really feel hungry. (laughs) Yeah. But I still eat it anyways because I love it. (laughs) Exactly. There's also some evidence, this is interesting, that capsaicin works as an endorphin, right? So serotonin is an example of an endorphin. And so the thought in how this works is that the body makes the endorphins in response to pain. And the heat of the spice is perceived by the body as pain. So there's some possibility that like spicy food may help with stress or low mood. Well, and I should say spicy food, specifically capsaicin from chili peppers. Like curcumin, capsaicin also works as an ingredient, so it can help protect cells against damage from free radicals and, you know, protecting against inflammation in general. And so I think that's where, again, we're getting some of that connection between spicy foods and maybe reduced cancer risk. There are some claims with heart disease because it says chili peppers may reduce the damaging effects of bad cholesterol, the LDL. And I think the mechanism of action is, again, the antioxidant piece and the heat, which can increase blood flow through the body. So You may have heard about spicy foods and digestion. So capsaicin may help improve digestion. So the spicy food can increase the digestive fluids in the stomach, which can help speed up the digestive process and potentially relieve diarrhea. The other side of that is if you have too much, you can certainly experience some stomach upset. And that is short term, but you may not want to just go all in, (laughs) you know. Also on the gastro front, it used to be believed that spicy foods could lead to ulcers, but more current research shows that capsaicin can actually offer protection against H. pylori, which is a pathogen that can cause ulcers. I mean, it's like funny what happens when we keep learning. That's a surprising finding. Right? Surprised me to hear that. Yeah, because people think sometimes spicy, it burns you. We like literally. Right. Well, I think it's because it has that antimicrobial, which means that it can kill bacteria in the system. So on the pain reliever front for spicy things, specifically capsaicin, so ingesting it, I think, goes back to that endorphin piece. And then you'll see capsaicin in topical creams for pain. It can have sort of like an analgesic, like a numbing effect. So you'll see it maybe in topical things for arthritic pain or neuropathic pain. Overall, those who eat spicy foods regularly, this is according to a 2015 study, regularly meant like six to seven days a week, so that's a lot, had 14% lower mortality rates. I don't know how they get to that. It's sort of interesting, but again, it talks about habitual consumption of spicy foods was inversely associated with total and certain cause-specific mortality, independent of other risk factors. So seems like, you know, no harm, (laughs) a lot of upside, but just recognizing what we're really looking for it to do. So wrapping this up, I think when looking at the metabolic effect across all the studies, I think it's relatively mild. If, you know, certainly very mild if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to add some cinnamon to my coffee or sprinkle some cinnamon on my yogurt, (laughs) right? Right. There's more compelling research with curcumin and capsaicin. Curcumin, we'll do another nutrition nugget on. Capsaicin, again, I don't know how many chili peppers you have to eat to get enough. I have taken a supplement that has capsaicin in it in the form of, it's called Capsimax, which is a patented ingredient. It has 100 milligrams of this Capsimax, which is 2% 
capsaicinoids. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you guys want to give it a try. Caveat to that, this formula does have some stimulants in it. So if you are sensitive to that, don't try it at all or start low and slow and, you know, see how you feel. I think there's compelling research on some of the benefits of spicy foods and the most around capsaicin. I don't think it'll be all end all, but if you've hit a plateau or you feel like you're eating a ton of food, quite literally, it might be time to like spice it up and see what happens. Laurel, what do you think? Any questions? No, that's like the capsaicin information is totally new to me and I'm just absorbing it. I mean, who doesn't want to take something that could reduce your risk of cancer? That's like just really worth considering. Yeah. And when it comes to antioxidants, we want a variety of them. You can go back to our nutrition nugget just on antioxidants for that too. So, well, Laurel, thank you again for being here. I appreciate you. You're welcome. It's been a lot of fun, actually. I learned so much from these podcasts of yours. (laughs) Awesome. Well, as always, everybody, I'm your host, Jen Trepic. Connect with me on Instagram or all social media. I'm at Jen Trepic, J-E-N-N-T-R-E-P-E-C-K. Our website is a salad with a side of fries. So whichever way is easiest for you, click the button, send a message, contact us. I want to hear your takeaways, your ideas, your questions. This is also the easiest way to learn more about working with me. My next group cohort is starting early October. So let's definitely touch base on that if you're ready to commit, or maybe you're ready to become a member. Go to glow.fm slash salad with a side of fries. Becoming a member shows your support for this podcast, this community, and most importantly, it truly supports your health. You will get this week's recipe for the apple, sweet potato, and kale quinoa salad, and it's your last chance to book your quarterly one-on-one live call with me. I can't wait to chat with you. So until next week, remember, what it means to eat clean depends on who you ask. And something labeled as clean doesn't inherently mean it's healthful. Yet, (laughs) we are all served by eating the rainbow and making extra effort to add foods that are closer to the source to our plate. Well, friends, that's it for today's episode of Salad with a Side of Fries. Congratulations for making yourself and your health a priority. Thanks so much for joining us. Be sure to click subscribe or follow on your favorite podcast platform. Share us with a friend and we'll be back next week. Always remember, you deserve it and you are worth it. Happy healthy.